All right, so what's going on, y'all? It's Jay Myrax of UltraWest.com. Um, we live, so this is a simulcast once again. I got my live stream on Instagram right now, and I got the YouTube audience. So please forgive me once again if I'm not looking directly at the camera at any given point. For those that are watching the replay right now, thank you for checking it out. Hopefully, you get a lot of value out of this stream if you haven't already done so like I said go ahead and check out my six-part video course for music producers sound mind sessions I will leave a link in the video description on the YouTube so go ahead and get that it's a free six-part course It's packed with a lot of information for music producers and um, I think it's gonna bring a lot of value to you if you check it out so let's get started so today's stream is really going to be about music technology and the future of music technology. Uh, I think that you know a lot of times with the music producer community we talk about a lot of the tools and a lot of the equipment that comes out and it's real fun to talk about equipment. It's really exciting. I mean it's a really exciting time right now because of course you have things like the um, MPC Live and the MPC 2.0 and that kind of stuff and that's great technology for music producers but um, I think we don't talk often enough about the future and really think about the future from the perspective of the impact that technology is having on music and also just on general culture and I think that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So, um, last night, actually, I saw an article. It was a Forbes magazine article, and it, it was talking about how the music industry is killing its own business. And the context of it was that, you know, because of the paradigm shift of music going more towards, you know, digital and you know streaming and all of these different platforms that are not as beneficial for the musician it's created a situation where we're potentially making it where we won't have a next generation of aspiring musicians because there's not enough money being made from streaming and digital now Yes, we've had some record sales on digital in general in the music industry. We've had record sales. Um, but record sales doesn't mean anything in today's climate because record sales now accounts the streaming or the subscription services. And if any of you are not familiar with, stream, with streaming or subscription-based services for music, you know, you pay a monthly fee to be able to get access to all or, you know, the majority of the music that is in a specific music library or streaming service. And you get access to it um, pretty much unlimited. And because you're, playing, you're paying a flat fee, it makes it really difficult to judge how much of one specific artist or one specific album that you're actually listening to and in turn it makes it hard to create a fair revenue split between the music subscription service platform and the artists so what's happening now is that you know artists are getting pennies you know like really literally pennies per play and, and not even like pennies more so like um, hundreds of a penny, you know, thousands of a penny. It's not even like a full penny per play, which really doesn't equate to much money from streaming and, and at this point. So it's really hard for a musician today to create a living in the traditional ways, which was, you know, traditionally you, you make an album, you can sell your album like back in the day of physical, you know, with CDs and stuff, you used to be able to pull up, 
you know, to your event, do your show, and then sell CDs, you know, or, you know, you could sell CDs out the back of your trunk. You know, a lot of artists, especially in hip hop, used to have those types of movements where they would just pull up and sell stuff right out their trunk because they were known and people knew that, you know, that artist was reputable and they would support the artist, especially if it was from a local neighborhood or whatever. But, you know, that kind of way of dealing with sales is no longer a really profitable way of doing business because most people are not consuming um, from physical CDs and physical media in that, in that case. So what's happening now is that there's not a lot of money from sales, especially not from record sales. With streaming, people are not even necessarily going to a specific album anymore to buy it. They're going to, you know, different songs from albums and, it, you know, you can cherry pick because of the platform allows you to cherry pick the best songs. So there's really not a lot of digital revenue from from streaming that goes directly to artists and there's really not a lot of um, direct revenue that goes to a artist even if they're using something like iTunes because iTunes has the same issue you can cherry pick and just pick the best song that you like or whatever and the rest of the record goes by the wayside and the artist doesn't see the revenue or return anymore and you know we got in, we got into this predicament for a lot of reasons but one of the reasons that the music industry got into this predicament is because they didn't have conversations about the future of technology they didn't look at technology as a potential threat to their business model and because of that they allowed people that were not in the music industry to capitalize on the technological front and create systems that cater to you know the average consumer that was getting music but it didn't benefit the artists and I think it's important that we have these conversations about the, f the future of technology so that we have more educated people thinking about ways to innovate and create a future for musicians because Without us, without the, you know, the innovators in music, without people that are actually creating revenue even in music, you won't have a future because you will never have people that aspire to get into the game if they know that there's no money to be made in the game. That's just the reality of it. So that's why we got to have these conversations so that we keep thinking about how we can make money, how we can capitalize on things, and how we can really keep the, the whole system going. What's going on, Push Button Producer? Um, thank you, everybody that's joined so far. Um, if you haven't already done so, make sure you check out the Sound Mind sessions once we finish up with this stream. I'll leave a link in the description, but we're just talking about music production and music technology right now. So the topic is really about the future of music technology more so. Um, you know, and the article was just really, the Forbes article that I was reading last night was really um, sobering because it just showed that we're doing so little work on the um, technological domain as the music com as as a music community, and we've always been really at the mercy of the high tech companies. We really haven't been innovating in any substantial way that has been um, beneficial to the artists or beneficial to anybody in the music industry that's looking to create revenue streams. We've been more so self-serving in like more superficial ways, whereas companies like Apple and Amazon have been able to create platforms that bring revenue in and capitalize on the content that we creators create as you know musicians so you know one of the things that I've been thinking about for years is um, the depth of desktop computing 
You know, I mentioned a little bit of that on um, Twitter today. If you guys follow me on Twitter as well, I talk, you know, randomly about that kind of stuff as well. But um, I, I believe that we will, within the next, say, four to five years, see some major challenges to desktop computing. And it's important that we talk about this now because the music industry has this problem of getting so comfortable with technology and platforms that they don't look at what the actual landscape is and react and start doing things that are innovative. They just are always reactionary when it's too late. And we end up getting messed over when we do that. But I believe that we are going to see the death of desktop computing on a major scale for the general consumer within the next four to five years, being realistic about it. And some of you already might be saying, no, nah, no way, it's not, no way we're going to see that die because I use a laptop all the time and, you know, that how else can you mix and make beats and whatever. The problem with that thinking is that, first of all, as a musician, you don't have enough influence over the general public or the general consumer to influence what platforms or paradigms they use for computing. And the reality is that the majority of people especially in the U.S., but around the world now, it's, it's becoming more and more apparent that everybody has a mobile device. Mobile is the new computer for so many. Most of you right now that are looking at this on IG are probably looking at this on a mobile device. So we are using mobile heavily. And the problem with this is that the more that we depend on mobile, the less that we will have a need for desktop for general computing. Now, again, you, you as a producer, you use it all the time probably for making beats and whatnot, and it's you know probably your bread and butter. If you're not using desktop, you're probably using laptop, which I consider to be the same thing because they're using the same operating systems and same applications. So the problem is if the general public, which is much greater than the music producer community, much larger, if the general public begins to not buy desktop computers as often or as frequently as they did, say, four years ago, five years ago, that's going to present challenges to companies like Apple and Samsung and Microsoft and how do you think that they are going to address those challenges? What do you think they're going to do to address those challenges? What they're going to do first of all is if the revenue is not there they're going to discontinue products. No question about it, it's just business. If the revenue is not there from the general consumer there is no reason for them to make laptop or desktop computers. So the problem with this now is you as a producer, what are you going to do when there's no longer highly or widely available laptop or desktop options for you? What are you going to do? I already see that within the next maybe four to five years, we're going to see also some death of other protocols and um, connectivity. I believe that within the next few years, we're going to see a, a drastic decline in USB protocol as well. That may die just like other protocols that we've seen die over the past 20 years. I was just saying, you know, previously, we don't use serial ports anymore. That's dead. We don't use parallel ports that's dead. We just recently saw the death of Firewire. 
you know, SCSI, good riddance, that, that got gone long ago. You know, some of y'all that use the NPCs and whatnot know about SCSI. Some of y'all might still use SCSI, but for the general public, SCSI has been dead. So, with the push towards everybody using more mobile, what do you think is going to happen to something like USB? USB is not necessary for most mobile users besides the synchronization and charging charging the device but I mean that's more of a general a, a general thing like we won't necessarily need USB for charging anyhow so the question is what are you gonna do when these paradigms start to die because they will die it's not that they're going to be here forever Mobile is just what it is. Mobile is a platform that presents convenience to the general consumer. It's not convenient to lug around a laptop for most things that people are doing online or on the internet in general. So for you as a music producer, you need to start thinking about where the technology is going because when Apple or somebody else shuts you off, you're going to still going to have to work. And I know a lot of you don't want to go back to using NPCs and whatnot. Some of you may, but, you know, for the most part, you're going to have to figure out different ways to work. And what I will say is today, mobile is definitely, definitely powerful enough for music production, especially if you're making beats. There's no way at this point that if you are living in this modern era, if you haven't tried working with mobile, you better start. You better start learning now how to use mobile to accomplish what you can do on desktop. Because when the format dies, when, when the laptop dies, when there's no longer a relevance for laptop or desktop, you're going to be stuck. You're going to be stuck. Everybody said that Pro Tools was not going to take over. Pro Tools was not going to be a thing. You know, it didn't sound good. It didn't, you know, work as well. It didn't do all this and that. It wasn't as professional and all. There was all these excuses. And guess what? Pro Tools took over, shut down a whole bunch of studios that were stuck on tape and, you know, big consoles and all that. People had to move on. People had to learn new ways to work and get stuff done because the old way became irrelevant. All right, so the problem is are you going to allow your preconception of the technology and the current state of the technology to keep you from actually learning and mastering it before the shift happens? Like I say, you, you think a shift is not happening Wait five years from now. Look at the power of the the iPad Pro right now. Okay? The iPad Pro has about as much power as some of these laptops had just a few years ago. The iPad Pro. So the thing is now, what do you think an iPad is going to be able to do in 2020? An iPad in 2020 will probably have as much power as the laptops of today. Because if we if we go back to like the the way that the the computer industry has developed, they follow what's called Moore's law. And Moore's law says that the um density of um transistor-based computers would, would um, double every 18 months, basically. And that's really technical, but really it's saying that technology would double in speed and, you know, um, and m mostly in speed and power every 18 months. And that's held true over the past 40 years, really. So the thing is, if it's going to double if if power is going to double for computing every 18 months then 5 years from now yes your 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 
iPad or whatever you're using right now, five years from now, is going to be a beast. And, you know, we talk about the death of USB and stuff. I know some of y'all are saying, no, you know, it's not going to die. I, you know, uh, and of course, people need to be able to store stuff on USB drives and this and that. And the, the general public ain't walking around with all these USB devices. They're not walking around with... Um, external hard drives like music producers are. They don't need that. And the reason they don't need that is because the platforms that the general public are using now are designed to make things convenient. So that's why they have things like cloud storage. The general public is cool with putting their stuff in the cloud. They don't need to lug around all these peripheral devices with them. That's unnecessary. Okay, I mean, you. So some of you, there's always people that will say Moore's law is, you know, failed. I've seen it fail. It, 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 there's always that argument, but you still see that technology is moving in that direction. So I don't care if Moore's law fails. What are you going to do when Apple? decides that they no longer need to make a laptop because they don't they can't sell it anymore. It's not a it's not a profitable device anymore. That that's the real question. And I think, you know, for us as musicians and people in this community, we have to be thinking about innovative ways to to create in the the more open and more untapped landscapes. Now, there are plenty of mobile apps right now that are very cool like you have things like um, the, the IMPC and iMachine and you know you have um, Beatmaker and you know I've recently been on heavy on Core Gadget that's been my joint like Core Gadget is awesome it's a great workstation and it has so much like so much possibilities and it's so easy to use I've been using that heavily but, you know, w the thing is with iOS and all these mobile platforms, they're still pretty heavily untapped as far as software development goes. So a lot of you may say, well, they don't have the mixing apps and the, the plugins and this and that. They don't have it because you're not making them. You, you're not making them. You're not making them. We don't have the technology there yet because we aren't taking it seriously we're not us being the creative the music community we are not taking advantage of the frontier that mobile presents presents as an opportunity for creating a revenue and creating new ways to create for music musicians we're allowing people to come in that are not even from the music industry to make those innovations. And yes, I mean, we can name a couple of products out there. I know I, I definitely know about Aria and a couple of other things that are out there. But if you compare the amount of software that's available for mobile to the amount of plugins and software that are available for desktop, it's definitely lopsided in favor of desktop. So, that creates so much opportunity for musicians, you know, creatives and, and companies that have an interest in the music industry to innovate there and take the platform seriously because we don't make computers. That's the thing we don't make. The music industry does not make any computers. We are at the mercy of the big corporations that have you know, the big R&D dollars to spend money on microcomputing, you know, nanocomputing, nanotechnology. The problem is, if we're going to wait for somebody else to present us with the opportunities or present us with the technology, then we're going to be reactionary. And I'm just saying that if you take music seriously now, you better start thinking about how to make yourself relevant in a world that doesn't have laptop and desktop. A lot of stuff is going to die. I'm saying that 
a lot of the technology is going to die. Television, I don't care about television right now. Like, I got somebody in the chat saying television. Uh, television is dead in terms of, like, you know, cable and all that stuff. I, you know, television is dead. But for us right now, we're talking about music technology. So you're going to see desktop and laptop die as well. So doesn't matter if TV dies before that, you're still going to see desktop and laptop die. Because, again, we don't dictate what the general consumer uses. If we were able to do that, then we wouldn't have this predicament with album sales. Because what would have happened is we would have said, hey, we made this new format for playing music, and you can only play music with this device, and you have to buy it this way. We don't dictate that. Apple came in and smashed on us. Hey, take these phones, take these devices, and, you know, use our service to buy. You, you, we don't make that stuff. So, again, we're at the mercy. We're at the mercy of these big corporations. So we better start to really embrace technology. And if you're still out there and you're, you're on the, um, the fence about messing with mobile, you better start messing with mobile. You better learn how to do what you can do now on your laptop or desktop with a mobile device because it's possible if you put the work in and you learn it. There's, the, the technology is there now and it's only going to get better with time. What's good, fam? What's good, Marv? How you doing, man? I wanted to bring this up, though, because I think that if we don't keep discussing stuff, if we don't keep discussing things, then we're just going to, we're always going to be on the reactionary side of things. We're not going to be prepared at all. So that's what it is. I'm, I'm going to look at this, um, going to look at this chat room or the, uh, let me see what people are saying in here. But if the general consumer is still buying desktops at high rates, why are we talking about laptops dying? There's no fall off in people buying either. See, why are we talking about that? Because you need to talk about it because it's a reality. You, you're, being, you're, you're being comfortable with the idea that things last forever and no platform lasts forever. Did you think that 20 years ago... The majority of the computers that we use now would be mobile devices. Nobody's going for this iPad is the future stuff. Tablet sales and mobile. Mobile is, is on the one down. Okay, well, I mean, tablet sales are maybe not it, but mobile is definitely Mobile is it. it. It may not even be that you have tablets. It might just be that it is mobile. I'm saying mobile. We're not talking about just mobile from the perspective of iPads. Mobile is just the the whole ecosystem. That that would include the tablets. That would include the, the wearables. That would include all the platforms. So it doesn't matter if you think iPad is not it. It really doesn't matter. What does matter is that if you walk down the street right now, do you see people with laptops or do you see people with their phones out? Do you see people, you know, going to the store heavily to buy new laptops all the time or are you seeing more people buying stuff for their phone, peripherals for their phone, devices and things for their phones? You got to think about it. You know, don't get too comfortable with these platforms. That's the point. Let me see. It's going to be all on the phone. No disrespect to anyone, but I haven't heard something mind-blowing from an iPad or cell phone maker. You're not listening, man. <laughs> People are here killing it. Mar Check out Marv. Mar Marv is in here. I think Marv is still in here. Check out Marv's music. Marv is, is smashing, man. Have, have you listened to, like, the Bizzle records and stuff, man? Marv is smashing on there. Have you listened to Jay Hen? Like, Jay Hen from the business. 
killing it on iPad Pros, man. If you ever heard anything that's spectacular on iPads, you're not listening and you just don't know what people are doing. There's some people out here smashing on iPads. So you can't say that if you're, if you're waiting for someone else to impress you, then you're being you're, you're being too comfortable. Marv is getting it in, man. I don't care if if you don't think that Marv is good, that's fine. That's your opinion. But um yeah, there was a there was a dude on um the the new Kendrick Lamar album that is a pr primarily a garage band iOS user. And he's he's super dope. I don't think he um I think he came out and said he didn't make that music that he did for the Kendrick Lamar album on the iPad or on on his phone cuz he uses a, a iPhone but he said he didn't do that on the iPhone but in general a lot of his music is done on the iPhone and is dope. He's an incredible musician, guitar player, multi-instrumentalist. Um real dope. But if you're waiting for someone else to impress you, then you know you're not being you're not being innovative. You're not being creative at that point because I mean you use a lot of technology now. If you only use technology because you saw somebody else use it, then you're not using your brain because anything that has the ability to create sound to record sound, man, you should be using it. You should understand how to use it. And you should understand how to get value out of it. That's the point. You can't be so comfortable with the old technology. Laptop is old technology, and if you're that comfortable with that and you won't explore anything else, then yes, at some point, you will be left behind because you won't understand how to navigate in the new system when, every, when everything has to conform to mobile or whatever the new platform is. What apps do I use on um, iPad? Somebody asked that. Um, mainly, I, I like uh, Core Gadget is like the joint to me. That's like one of my faves right now. I've been doing a lot of great stuff with that. You know, I can take that on the plane and feel like I can do everything that I'm able to do in this studio on that joint. If you follow my Instagram, I mean, I, I got some stuff, man, but. Also, I like Beatmaker 2. Beatmaker 2 was probably the first one where I really felt like I could get it in. I think Beatmaker 2 is probably my favorite one for sampling because it's really um, it's really a sample-based program. Like the samplers that it has in it is really coming from like the MPC and ASR10 style um, platform. So I I love that. Um, use iMachine. You know, I, I, I'm a sound designer for NI, so I, I develop a lot of the sound content for iMachine 2. I've um, been doing that for since it came out. And, um, you know, I use that sometimes as well. Um, also, like a lot of a lot of little apps and stuff, like I have some of the, the Moog stuff. I have um, a lot of the IK stuff. I have, I have a lot of different apps, but I would say Gadget is the one that really like flipped my wig because of the workflow and the sounds and the um, you know the sound quality is good and just the export capabilities like the way you can export stuff you can go like straight to Ableton or you can go stems and it's like really really good man really good system No, I mean, somebody asked, do I link it to my monitors um, later? The way I'm set up, I can link it to my monitors right now, man. I, You know, I, it's just a cable. <laughs> it's, it's not rocket science here, man. You know, I just go in there and just listen to it. And um, I use an iRig, um, an iRig as well, the iRig Pro, and it, it works good, man. Like, I use that for connecting my bass and, you know, my guitar and, um microphones, if I want to sample stuff, sample snares, sample some, you know, shakers, whatever. I, it, It's a dope system, man. Like, I, I can't, it, it's such a complete system that it's hard for me now to even justify using a lot of the other stuff because of what I can do with it, man. It's not even, it's not even a game anymore. Like, a lot of times, 
you know, I, I got a lot of keyboards and all this stuff in here. A lot of times nowadays, I'll just turn on Core Gadget and and work, man. And you know, maybe I don't use all of the stuff that I did from Core Gadget. I, you know, as a producer, you know, one of the main tools that I use is um, sound replacement. You know, like I, I, most good engineers, you know, that I've talked to are. Um, secretly replacing a lot of sounds in production. I'm not even going to name any names, but they replace a lot of sounds in order to get the production to work. So, you know, I do a lot of sound replacement. I don't just stick with what was in the device. But, you know, my per, my, my whole production process starts from just songwriting. Like, I, I like to write music and compose first, and I don't like to get bogged down with a lot of technology and something like Core Gadget allows me to just get to the point and just just work and just create and create the chord progressions and the melodies and create the rhythms and then I can start worrying about the production once I actually have a actually have a song or an idea to produce. That's my concept. That's how I work. So everybody's different. Some people gotta hear all the sounds. Some people don't understand how to create a demo and then produce a demo. I come from creating demos and then producing demos and turning those into full production. So my process is a bit different. So that's why Core Gadget can work for me. For some of y'all, if y'all don't work like that, I get it. You know, you got to have all the sound, all the effects and all that going. But, you know, Core Gadget is awesome for me. Dope. I'm glad you like the Headland Flow joint. Shout out to um, Divided Souls for the dope sounds on that. Those dudes are awesome, awesome sound designers. You're using apps. I'd rather vintage gear. That's cool. I mean, I, I, I have no shortage of equipment. Trust me. Like, I mean, I have analog EQs. I have, you know, a distressor and a, you know, mic E over here. I, you know, got the UAD. I got, I have gear too, and I use it. Trust me, I'm not telling you that you should stop using apps and all this stuff. That's not what I'm saying. I'm telling you you should, you should learn to use the latest technology and not poo-poo it and feel like you're above it because it's not in the pro professional sphere right now because it will be. You know, people didn't think Pro Tools was going to be what it became, but it, it became that. So, you know, you got to be willing to explore and learn what, technology is able to do and not be reactionary because when you get stuck into that whole like oh you know we don't have that technology anymore available to buy you're stuck I have no interest in mobile producing but I could do it if I had to cool I mean to each his own man I, you know the conversation you know what the conversation is so if that's not for you you know this conversation probably not for you Definitely not interested in mold production. Check it, man. You know, that's that's what it is. Somebody asked if I use Link to pair with my dog. Um, yes, I have used Link, actually. I actually use Link, surprisingly, you know, a lot of people use Link to work with... Um, the, the DAW and like synchronize stuff so that they can play together but what I did actually was tracked out old school so what I mean by that is you know back in the the days of the MPC and MIDI sync and all that um, you used to have to use MIDI sync to track out the individual parts from your MPC or whatever and what I did was I used the Ableton link with my iPad to track out things from my iPad through some of my analog equipment directly into um, Ableton. So I was, you know, I had a nice, um, nice chain. You know, I had my um, my EQs and my um, my UAD stuff going, and I tracked it out real time, synchronous, synchronized using Ableton Link, and it all lined up great. It was perfect. It was better than a lot of MIDI sync and MTC. So, you know, I think that the Ableton Link protocol is awesome as well. If you guys haven't started using that, start using it. Start seeing what you can do with it. Start collaborating with other folks that have able to link stuff and see what you can do man start pushing the boundaries don't don't wait for somebody else to do something dope and then you figure out that you can do something dope 
you do something dope, you you think creatively, and you go out there and do something dope. Phil recording samples getting hot. Man, listen, Phil recording, a lot of hip-hop dudes um, kept that secret. Plenty of people was doing field recording, and, you know, I talked to old engineers and producers, and they tell me stuff like, man, we used to, you know, we dropped phone books from, like, five stories up to, and recorded the sound that it hit, you know, made on, you know, hitting the ground and made a kick for that, a kick with that and stuff like that. People been field recording for a long time, just wasn't talked about. And that's why in the Sound My Sessions I talk about that stuff, because people ain't talking about that as much, but it's, it's starting to pick up now, and I'm glad it is because people need to start recording. We we kind of got into this mode where there became so much digital content available. There's so many samples and VSTs and all that, and people stop recording. And it's like, okay, if you stop recording, there's not going to be new content. People just reusing the same content. You got to record, man. I you know I live I feel recorder. I, I got a feel recorder. I live by it as a sound designer. I'm trying to record new stuff all the time because that's where. I get my inspiration, not just from use and stuff that somebody else recorded. So I feel you. Uh, Mario X, bro, tell us when Native Instruments dropping that jam with the screen. We don't talk about Native Instruments on my um, on my strings, man. This is the Ultra West string, man. You know that's that's what it is, man. We don't we don't do the Native Instruments stuff here. You know, let them do their announcements. I, I do sound design for Native Instruments. I don't run that company. Using every resource available to make music will make you better. It also inspires new sounds. Real talk, bro. Mike, that, what's up, man? Real talk, man. Real talk. You're innovative based on the parameters of technology. Producers are consumers, not engineers. Producers, I mean, producers wear a lot of hats, man. Like, you can't put producers in a box. Some producers are um, engineers as well. Some producers have great minds and use stuff creatively in ways that, you know, general people wouldn't dare use, um, you know, technology in. So I think producers are great engineers, actually. Produce, producers, I say producers are some of the the best reverse engineers ever because basically what a lot of producers do is they figure out what sounds, what music, what ideas work and then they find out a way to recreate some of those vibes and expand that and put out a product that is similar or if not better than something that they've already seen that worked in the market. So producers are engineers, man. I, that, that, I don't have that mentality. Producers definitely know how to engineer stuff and engineering is not limited to Knowing how to EQ and compress and all that. That's it it's more to it than that. Everyone is different. I like hitting those pads. Great combo though. Everybody is different, man. Listen, if you watch me for the past I've I've been on YouTube for ten years, man. If you watch me for the past ten years, I'm an NPC diehard, man. I I it's NPC to the depth. Still you got to learn how to use new stuff, man. You can't be in a box just because you love the past. Like, so what? Like, there's so many other ways to express ideas musically that if you stick to just one platform and you say, I can't do anything else and I can't say anything else, you, you'll miss out on a lot of potential, man. So I'd say keep an open mind. Like, explore different stuff. Learn how different stuff works, man. Like, each platform presents its own sets of limitations and parameters that allows you to express yourself within those parameters and also find ways to expand past those parameters and create stuff that's innovative, man. So, like, don't limit yourself to just one way of thinking about music. Really start looking at other ways and get some inspiration because it's a feedback loop, man. You might find something like some limitation that you have on another machine and translate that to some other creative things that you can do with something else. I will say this. Machine changed the way that I use the MPC and any other sampler just because of the way it works. Because I was a hardcore MIDI guy with the MPC. I was always the dude that had the MIDI setups. You know what I'm saying? I have the, the Logic template and 
I had the reason set ups and all that, but realistically, machine had different parameters and it didn't, it, it, the strong suit wasn't MIDI, so I had to learn some different ways. And because of that, it really transformed my production and transformed my mind and helped me to like expand the way I think about production. So don't don't be like so one dimensional with your views. It's good it's good to like stuff. You're supposed to like stuff. You're supposed to have some type of preference because that's what brings your personality out as a music producer. But beyond that, you can't limit yourself unless you want to be in a box and just not someone that understands, you know, different ways of being expressive. SB1200 cost four grand. Now, back then you can get one for 700. Uh, SB1200, um, that's another conversation. Uh, I got a good homie that is a SB1200 um, expert. Um, he's actually in the the current SB1200 um, manual or book that they have out there, and we go back and forth all the time. But you know. A lot of the SP-1200 stuff is um, is legend, and, um, you know, there's definitely a sound to it, but I think there's a lot of legend and uh, mysticism behind it, so that's got people, you know, boosting up the amount that it costs. You know, a lot of times, music production, it gets like that, like somebody famous does some stuff with it, you know, like a 3000 like the Black 3000 why is the Black 3000 $3,000? Because Dilla had it, really? I mean, you're not going to make beats like Dilly if you have a black 3000, so that's craziness. But there's always this mysticism behind, you know, gear when somebody does something incredible. But it's really, it's the person behind the gear, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, you can use whatever you want. It's the person. Like, I, I sound like me regardless of whatever I use. If I use iPad, I'm going to sound like me. If I if I get on the MPC, I'm going to sound like me. If I get on Ableton, I'm going to sound like me. And that's just what it is. I'm curious, in theory, that the whole movie soundtracks will be produced on mobile devices. Listen, again, you, you kind of coming from this perspective that you think that a movie, uh, a, a, a film score, has any impact, really, on what devices Apple or Samsung or anybody else makes. They don't. So it doesn't matter... You know, if, if a film, if a person that's doing film doesn't want to go mobile, guess what? They're going to find all the old devices they can and figure out how to keep doing the stuff the way they was doing. In the meantime, though, there will be a generation that comes that learns how to do film and everything else on a mobile device. So, you know, you're talking about a transition period, and you're also talking about a paradigm shift. So when... The people that are the the top, the upper echelon, finally have to retire. You're going to be left with a new crowd or group of people that have different skill sets and traits. And, you know, that's not so far-fetched. Y'all see it right now. The guys that came up with the NPCs and stuff, dope. You know, some of the dopest producers use NPCs. But guess what? Some of the best music Producers that are working right now actually use Fruity Loops, man. You know, people like, and I, I'm not going to talk about trap folks, you know, check out people like K. Trinata, man. That's a Fruity Loops head, man. Like, people that make some of the dopest music now use Fruity Loops. So you can't say that there's not going to be a transition, there's not going to be a shift. When technology comes and people learn or grow with that technology and matures and over time you have a wave of people that are just doing incredible stuff with that technology and that's what's happening with FL right now people thought FL was a joke and all that and then you know Knife Wonder came and started smashing but then people still say oh but guess what now FL is a fully capable dog it's, it's incredible it does so much stuff and if you didn't learn how to use it, I mean, you didn't learn how to use it. And that's just what it is. Will you, will you still need a bass? Or are you saying, like, whole albums are going straight out the pocket? I mean, whole albums right now don't even matter for most consumers. I mean, diehards, yes, they buy albums. Music enthusiasts buy albums. But for the most part... 
people cherry pick. So I, I think albums is not even a relevant conversation anymore because of streaming services, because of iTunes, because of Amazon. It's you know it's just the nature of the beast. When you give people the ability to cherry pick, they will. Cats buying sounds and and VST it all sounds the same. Yeah, man, that's why I tell people you got to start recording. You have to. There are so many lanes in music for movies and television commercial. There are, but I mean, that's what is that? That has nothing to do with the fact that people will start producing <laughs> that music using other devices. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to have a laptop to make music for television. I bet you, you can make. Like a lot of music, and tele especially if we talk about reality TV and stuff, that's where a lot of, of the opportunity is. Like there's more reality shows and that sort of stuff coming up than like produced shows at this point. Because realistically, when you have a, a, a full a, a show that is um, being scored by a single producer or a single composer, that's not an opportunity for a lot of people. That's an opportunity for one person. Um, a lot of the biggest opportunities come with the reality shows because they use license. They they use uh, music libraries. So because they're using music libraries, they pick out a lot of different tracks from a lot of different people, and that presents itself with a lot of opportunities for producers that make beats. But if you're just scoring and stuff, I you know it's, there's some dudes in here um, that can speak even better than me to that whole paradigm of producing for film and TV. I've got my share of credits for film and television, but, um, you know, it, there's opportunity. I'm not saying there's not opportunity here. I'm, what I'm really saying, though, is that the music industry in general is not going to survive solely off of that type of um, revenue stream because that's not available to everybody that's available to a small amount of people and if we talk about like your average indie band and stuff like that what happens to them they're not going to make music for television they're making music because they love music because they aspire to be some type of personality or have some type of influence on music culture so they start making music because they love it and they want to get it out but if they can't make money off of it and you're trying to tell them that they can do it on television how i mean that's a different that is a whole different scope of music production and i don't think that that's going to be the appropriate revenue stream for people that fit that singer songwriter and indie band paradigm so i think we have to have the discussion more deeply and not just say oh music on film and television i mean that you know welcome to like 15 years ago really because those that knew started doing it back then and got in and you know understood who to network with to get into the game and those that are doing it now are doing it and those that are just finding out about it now are taking really poor deals to be honest I get into that later but a lot of a lot of folks taking really poor deals to get their music on television and film so let's see Sorry, no NI to stress that last question. You know it. I'm not talking about it. <laughs> Shout out to Hank Shockley. Yes. Hank Shockley, the OG. Bomb Squad. Um, shout out to um, Keith, too. That's the homie Keith Shockley. Half the digital producers have no theory involved in the music. All seems automated. Who cares, man? <laughs> Who cares? You know what I'm saying? Like, we... That's that's the purest in us that's saying that, oh, they don't have theory. They have an ear. A lot of people that use the NPCs didn't have theory, but they had an ear. They were able to program. They were able to, you know, create and construct the music. And I think when we're talking about computers, I mean, even an NPC, when we're talking about that, it's programming, man. It's not... It, 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 it's not just playing. If you wanted to just play and make um, live recorded music, you'd join a band. You'd join a soul band, a funk band, you know, a hip-hop band or something. Y'all not doing that. Y'all, you know, you can't be on your high horse because you use an MPC and the people that use the digital stuff are programming. It's like we're all programming. Anybody that's using computer technology to arrange 
and produce music is doing some degree of programming. It might be a very um, high level of programming. It might not be that real low level, like, you know, coding and whatnot, but it's still programming. Limited thinking, equipment, loyalty, and braggadocia will suppress your progress. Real spit, homie. I stand corrected, but I didn't mean producer not capable of engineering. I'm talking about software engineering. Dude. I, okay, so for those of y'all that don't know, like my, my background, um, I graduated not with a degree in... Um, any music or engineering or anything like that. My degree is in computer engineering. I, I learned how to program. My my, um, my first programming language was C, and then I learned Java and assembly language. And you can teach yourself to program at this point, guys. There's no reason that you guys can't learn to program. And I would actually recommend that all of you guys that are serious producers learn to program. Um, let me see if I have this book in here. I wish I had this book in here. It's in the other room. But, um, what is it? The computer music, um, it's the computer music manual or something like that. One of the, the trippiest things that is said in there is it said that if you really want to innovate in, in digital computing, and if you really want, no, no, what he said is if you really want to innovate in music and digital music production you need to learn the program because that is the way that you're going to be able to create new sounds and new types of arrangements and new types of um, ideas with music and computers so he was saying that to say that if you don't learn the program if you don't learn the code you're going to only be able to use computers and digital technology to a limited degree it's not until you learn how to program to code that you will be able to really implement some new ideas into the game that nobody else has done. You guys can do it. Stop telling yourself that you can't do it. If you learn how to work all this equipment and all this software and all that, you guys can learn to code too. The time that you spend dedicated to the task is the time that is going to allow you to learn it. It's time spent on a dedicated task that allows you to become a master. So you can do it. I'm, I don't want to hear any producer say that they can't learn how to code. You can. It's logic. It's, it's about if then, if you do this, then this happens. It's about explaining yourself. So it's about understanding how to explain your thoughts and your ideas in iterative ways and learn how to create things that the computer can understand from a, a more basic level. That's all it is. Programming is not rocket science at all. It's logic. It's all logic. Let me see here. Um, Almighty Craig, I'll leave that to musicians. Okay, cool. Machine is real beastie. I use that but was raised on the ASR-10. ASR-10 is a beast too, man. Like, it's a lot of beastly um, producers that came up on the ASR-10, like some of the illest producers ever, man. For real. For real. Um, yeah, man. Let's see. My wonder. I'm, I'm behind. I'm talking, so I'm trying to catch up, and I'm trying to pick out stuff that's cool. Um, great show, turn my thoughts about the iPad. Cool. I'm glad. Thank you, man. Um, street scores. Thank you. Um, you're right, almighty. A lot of these kids sound the same. Dude, these kids, y'all killing me with the kids. I'm going to tell you, with these kids, start recording sounds, man. Listen, a SM57 going to cost you $100. A hundred dollars. Record some sounds yourself. <laughs> you know, it's just like we we make it so difficult. Like sound design is like it is an art. It's a science. 
but it starts with you experimenting. It starts with you actually recording stuff, man. If you learn to just start recording stuff and playing with the sounds, you you'll have something different, man. You, it's no way that you can walk around everywhere and not hear sounds and not think to record it. If you're not thinking that way, you're not a sound designer. Um, guys, so I have 48 seconds left, okay? So here's the problem, 48 seconds. All I can say is thank you so much for joining me once again. Um, thank you guys for, you know, participating in this. I, I love you guys. I love this community, man. This wasn't a bad session. I'm telling you, you guys can do it. You guys can be the next innovators, okay? Innovate, man, and don't be afraid of the technology. Don't get comfortable. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and check out Sound My Sessions. I'll leave a link in the video description for that. All right. Um, until next time, I just want to tell y'all peace and God bless.